Trimethylglycine, also known as betaine, is one of the supplements I knew I had to add to my stack because it could be useful in reducing one of the risk factors of dementia and heart disease. And there's evidence that trimethylglycine can support muscle growth, fat loss, and strength development at the same time. And when I started taking trimethylglycine, you wouldn't believe what happened to my muscle mass. So in this video, I'm going to share with you my results of taking trimethylglycine for three months. I'm going to share what happened to my blood work and body composition. And I'll also talk about the optimal dose for trimethylglycine and what's the research. Trimethylglycine, or TMG, also known as betaine, is an amino acid found in plants. Betaine got its name because it was discovered in sugar beets. Trimethylglycine and betaine are the same thing. They're just used interchangeably in different contexts. Betaine refers to its discovery in beets, and trimethylglycine refers to its chemical structure, as it's a glycine with three methyl groups. The main reason why I started taking trimethylglycine is because it can lower homocysteine levels. Homocysteine is an amino acid that, if elevated, is a risk factor for dementia, heart disease, and stroke. Trimethylglycine is a methyl donor because it has an attached methyl group and it supports methylation which helps to lower homocysteine levels. In February 2024 I took a blood test and my homocysteine was higher than I'd like it to be 12.1 micromoles per liter. It was considered in the normal range but optimal homocysteine is lower than 10 so I wanted to bring it down. Meta-analyses have shown that taking up to 4 grams of trimethylglycine per day for 6 weeks can lower blood homocysteine in healthy adults. Doses over 4 grams a day can increase cholesterol but a dose below 4 grams a day lowers homocysteine without raising lipids. The homocysteine reducing effects of trimethylglycine aren't massive, minus 1.23 micromoles per liter on average, but it's still noteworthy and desirable. I started taking 2 grams of TMG a day and I did it for 3 months. Then I took another blood test in July and my homocysteine had dropped to 9.7 micromoles per liter, which is a drop of 2.4 micromoles per liter. That's a pretty good drop. I did lose a little bit of body weight at the same time, but my diet and exercise were pretty much the same as before. However, research has found that weight loss and calorie restriction don't affect homocysteine levels even in people with type 2 diabetes and obesity, who lost 9.7% of their body weight. So the weight loss couldn't have explained my reduction in homocysteine. When it comes to exercise, then it's a little bit interesting because exercise can also increase homocysteine levels. A 2016 meta-analysis found that long-term low to moderate exercise increases homocysteine by 1.39 micromoles per liter, and short-term high-intensity exercise does so by 0.83 micromoles per liter. Between February and July, I actually exercised a lot more than I did before. So theoretically, my homocysteine would have been higher because of the exercise. But regardless, my homocysteine still dropped 2.4 micromoles per liter, despite exercising more than before. So the most likely scenario is that the 2 grams of TMG actually did lower my homocysteine, and quite a lot, 2.4 micromoles per liter. But this wasn't enough for me, I actually wanted to reduce my homocysteine a little bit more. Ideally, I would like it to be closer to 5. That's the reason I increased my TMG dose to 4 grams a day and I did it for the next 2 months. In October, my homocysteine came back at 9.62 micromoles per liter, which is another slight decrease, but it's not much different from the 9.7 in July. This makes sense as the studies show that 4 grams of TMG can lower homocysteine by on average 1.23 micromoles per liter, which I've exceeded already, so I'm probably not going to see an additional decrease from TMG alone. Overall, a drop of homocysteine from 12.1 to 9.6 is great. And it appears that TMG did play a major role in this. I'm going to continue taking 4 grams of TMG for the next few months to see if there is an additional drop, but right now it's unlikely that it would do so. So if you want to stay updated about that and see future videos about living longer and staying healthier, then make sure you click like and subscribe. But let's continue with muscle mass and strength. TMG has also been seen to enhance muscle growth in response to exercise. This 2013 randomized controlled trial found that those taking TMG had significantly higher growth hormone, IGF-1, and AKT signaling, which is the pathway responsible for muscle growth. The TMG group also had lower cortisol. Studies looking at the effects of TMG on muscle growth are mixed. Some find that TMG does increase lean body mass and decrease fat mass slightly, but those studies are usually quite small, with only 12 people taking TMG. From my own experience, I can say that I did gain a small amount of muscle after starting to take TMG, but I'm not 100% sure it's because of the TMG. For example, in November 2023, my appendicular lean mass index, which measures the amount of muscle in your arms and legs, was 8.9 kilograms per square meter, and my lean mass divided by square height was 19.1 
1 kg per square meter. Then the second DEXA scan in July showed my appendicular lean mass index had increased to 9.1 kg per square meter and my lean mass divided by square height was 19.4 kg per square meter. So it looks like I gained around 0.2 kg of lean muscle mass, which for a beginner might be insignificant, but for me who is more advanced with strength training and muscle growth, it would be considered quite a lot. As I said, I don't know if it was because of TMG, but I was surprised by this result because before the second DEXA scan, I had lost a few kilograms of weight and I was expecting to lose muscle because of the weight loss. And I was also doing much less resistance training and I was eating about 20 to 30 grams less protein as well. So I don't know how I was able to increase my lean body mass by 0.2 kilograms while lifting less, while having lost several kilos of weight and while also having eaten significantly less protein. But taking two grams of TMG between between this time period was one of the things that I did change. When it comes to strength development in TMG, then the evidence is a lot more limited. A 2017 review of randomized controlled trials on TMG supplementation showed that out of seven trials, only two showed improvements in strength and power of up to 24.61%, whereas the remaining five showed no effect. In a 2020 study on collegiate athletes, six weeks of five grams of TMG a day resulted in some improvements in the one rep max of bench, overhead press, sumo deadlift, and half squat. However, this study was very small only seven people in the TMG group and seven in the placebo group. Some following studies have found benefits on high-intensity performance. In a 2021 randomized controlled trial, TMG supplementation of 2 grams a day for 14 weeks improved predicted 1 rep max, VO2 max, and repeated sprint performance in young professional soccer players. A follow-up study on these soccer players found that TMG also increased testosterone and lowered cortisol. Another 2023 study on CrossFit athletes found that a dose of 2.5 and 5 grams of TMG increased testosterone by 7% compared to placebo after three weeks. There was no difference between the doses. However, another 2020 study found that six weeks of TMG supplementation didn't improve muscle hypertrophy or strength during CrossFit training. I personally haven't seen a lot of improvements for strength development after taking TMG, which could be also explained by the fact that I've been just eating less calories and I've lost more body fat, which naturally would make your strength gains more limited. The same with endurance. I can't say if TMG has improved my VO2 max or endurance because I've been training this more specifically and any improvements in my performance might be just because of me doing more cardio. Regardless, the evidence suggests that there might be some benefits for physical performance. You can get TMG from different foods, but more specifically, Specifically plant foods such as beetroot, spinach, wheat germ, wheat bran, whole grains and some vegetables. However, the estimated average daily intake for adults is between 100 to 300 milligrams a day on an average diet, which is quite low. As you saw from this video, then the effective dose for lowering homocysteine is up to 4 grams of TMG a day and at least 2 grams. Doses over 4 grams a day might raise lipids, but doses below that don't. And the same with strength development and muscle growth, the doses used are usually in the range of 4 grams a day, which is very hard to achieve with a just diet. So if you want to lower your homocysteine or get benefits in physical performance and body composition, then a dose of 2 to 4 grams a day is optimal. Check out my new book, The Longevity Leap, that walks you through 24 chapters on all different aspects of aging and longevity. You'll learn about nutrition, exercise, blood work, and supplements. Get The Longevity Leap from Amazon. Other than that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure you click a like and subscribe for future videos about living longer and staying healthier. My name is Seem. Stay optimized, stay empowered.